Good morning, and how are you today? I have a bit of an admin day down here in my shipping container. Over the past few weeks, things have started just to pile up and I have sorting out to do. I have wines to check, I have wines to put away, I have some rhubarb beer to rattle off and maybe bottle. So I have all these jobs to do. And why don't you come and help? There always seems to be more to do down in this place. I can potter down here all day, every day, if I had my way. So I want to go and check on the family, make sure they're not feeling too neglected and they're all happy, and then I'm thinking I might make a wine. I hadn't planned on making a wine today, but heck, why not? What shall we make? Well, we go for a forage after and we'll see what we can find to make a wine from. So, come on then, let's go see what the family are doing, then we'll go for a forage and make up a wine. Well, the family's happy, and that wasn't a bad forage. Quite a bit of rhubarb is still left to be picked, so I'm making plenty more rhubarb wine. And I thought I'm going to use some of that rhubarb as a base for a rhubarb and rose petal wine. I really rate rose petal wine and rose petal meads. It's probably one of my favourite summertime wines to make and meads to make. It's delicious, it's tasty. Oh, anyway. If you want to see the video of how to make a rose petal wine or a rhubarb wine, I'll link them up above, up by here. So, rhubarb and rose petal wine. I have never tried this combo before. I normally like to make a wine before I put the recipe out there on YouTube or on my blog. So, join me now for the process of bit of an experiment. We're going to make rhubarb and rose petal wine. Right then, I have just sanitised my fermentation bucket, all spotlessly clean and brilliant. Rhubarb, for rhubarb wine, is always best frozen. So I will chop this lot of rhubarb after, 
But now I'm going to be using rhubarb from the freezer. Pre-chopped, pre-frozen, just stuff I prepared a few weeks ago. If you want to use your fresh rhubarb, go for it. I just find that frozen rhubarb releases more juice and more sugar into your wine. I'm using about two kilos of sugar. I'm using about two kilos of rhubarb. So I'm going to pour this straight into the bucket. Come on then. With this rhubarb and rose petal wine, I don't want the rhubarb to overpower the very delicate rose petal flavours. I want them to complement each other. So I'm using more rose petals than I would do for a normal rose petal wine. I'm using about three pints worth with the two kilos of rhubarb. This ratio and proportion would really work well. The rose petals will add a lot of delicate summer light refreshingness and the rhubarb will come behind it with a great depth and body to the wine. That's my hope anyway. I'm thinking it's going to be a summer's drink. One for next summer for barbecues, for summer evening drinkings. It's going to be rosy, it's going to be light, it's going to be refreshing. Don't want it to be too strong, so I won't be using a high alcohol yeast. I want it to be slightly sweet so it complements fruit salads. That's my aim for this wine. That's what I'm going to be aiming to make. So I'm adding the three pints of rose petals into the fermentation bucket with the rhubarb. Awesome stuff. Right then. Simple. Straight in. And now sugar. I want it to be sweet, but not quite a dessert one. I don't want it to be too dry. So I'm thinking I'm going to start off with just over the kilo of sugar for the one gallon's worth. I will probably then feed the sugar into the demijohn every few days. Keep that yeast going until the yeast meets its alcohol tolerance level. So I'm going to pour in 1.2 kilos. Let this wade up and in. And now to the mix, I'm pouring over two litres of boiling water to dissolve that sugar and to get the rose petals releasing their colour and their flavour and to defrost that rhubarb. So pour it straight over, you know what to do. Give it a really good stir, get everything mingled in, having a party, becoming best buddies. So now a teaspoon of petalase to break down the fruit and to prevent a peptic haze forming in the wine at a later date. Let this cool, stand overnight, and then tomorrow morning I'm going to take a hydrometer reading, work out the alcohol and the sweetness levels, and then I will add the yeast. I will probably use a rhubarb yeast from Cross My Loof. I like that stuff for rhubarb wines. I really didn't plan on doing a wine today. I just saw the rose petals and the rhubarb and I thought, why not? Can you do me a favour and let me know down in the comments if you prefer the more formal style recipe or the more informal style such as this. Such as the type of video you've seen today where it's a bit random, where it's just making a wine off the cuff using the ingredients we have around. Or do you prefer the more formal style recipes where it's all done step by step by step? because I want to tailor the channel to the things that you want to watch. So I would really appreciate if you let me know down in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so as well. So I will see you for the next video. Have fun now.